OK, we're going to do some modelling with trigonometry. And I'm actually not going to do part A of the question. To save us a bit of time, we're just going to have a look at the mark scheme for part A of the question, because it just says to express 5 cos theta minus 8 sine theta in the form r cos theta plus alpha, where r is greater than 0, alpha is between 0 and pi. And so we know it's in radians. We want r in third form, and we want alpha correct to four decimal places. So that's just asking for us to do the harmonic identity. And I'm going to save a bit of time for us here, because we've done an awful lot of practice on the harmonic identity. They have found out that r would be root 89. So we're saying here that 5 cos theta minus 8 sine theta is going to be root 89 cos of theta plus alpha. And alpha is 1.0122. So I'm doing that to save us some time. Otherwise, we're going to be doing tons and tons of stuff on this question. We're going to be taking far too long. Okay? So that's for part A of the question. That is the harmonic identity. And you all should be able to get those first four marks for this question. And we're hopefully going to be able to get all of these marks that we have here. OK, this is where it becomes a modeling with trigonometry question. It says that the temperature of a kiln, T degrees centigrade, used to make pottery, can be modelled by the equation T equals 1,100 plus 5 cos x over 3 minus 8 sine x over 3, where x is between 0 and 72, and x is the time in hours since the pottery was placed in the kiln. First of all, what is a kiln? It's an oven, right? So this picture here is of a pottery kiln. So we're putting some clay into an oven, and we're going to be thinking about how it behaves when it's inside that oven. Now, the temperature of the kiln is this formula that we've got here, right? This formula that we've got here. And if you look at this bit that I have coming here afterwards, this bit we've just combined in part A, and we've combined it using the harmonic identity. So how would you describe the temperature that inside this kiln over these 72 hours, over these three days that the kiln is being used? How would we describe how the temperature is changing if we know that this can be written using the harmonic identity? It goes up and down. It's sinusoidal. Okay? We know that the temperature is going to go up and down in a sine kind of pattern because these two things have the same argument and we can use the harmonic identity to put them together as one thing. And we're going to try and calculate the maximum value of the temperature predicted by this model and the value of x to two decimal places when this maximum first occurs. So now you can see why this maximum kind of stuff is going to be used. Well, the temperature is 1,100 plus this harmonic identity which I know I can replace with this harmonic identity here, plus root 89 cos. But I'm going to have to write something different. What am I going to be writing differently? I'm going to be writing, instead of theta, I'm going to be writing x over 3 or a third x. So cos of x over 3 plus 1.0122. Everything else has stayed the same there. Now we're trying to find out what the maximum value of the temperature can be is. So the maximum value for the temperature is when what? Yep. It's at its peak. And when can you tell me about this thing here? When would this thing be at its peak out here? It would, that would be the peak. And it would be when this thing is equal to 1. It's when it's its maximum. So the maximum value for t is when cos of x over 3 plus 1.0122 is equal to 1, when it's equal to its maximum. And that maximum value of t, I'm going to write t with a little max in the corner, will just be 1,100 plus root 89 multiplied by 1. But I'm not going to bother writing multiplied by 1, because that's kind of not necessary. So that's 1,100 plus root 89, which is 1,109.2 doesn't say what it wants for the te temperature. So I'm just going to say 1,109.4 degrees. And I've done that to one decimal place. Well, I think it's saying the value of x. Oh, maybe it wants both of them to two decimal places. I think it was referring to that one. You're right. It's re it wants both of them. So we'll say 1109.43 degrees to two decimal places. Oh, I should have said degrees. 
centigrade. I'm not talking about angles here, am I? I'm talking about degrees centigrade. So it goes... Uh, well, I have to, I've only done one part of it so far. I haven't done the value of x. So I'm going to do, it probably would be three marks in the new spec. Why is there talking going on? Was there a question about this? No, okay. So we've done the first, but we found the maximum value of t. We now need to find the value of x when this maximum occurs. So I'm going to have a look at this thing, and I'm going to solve this equation. So when I solve this equation, that means that x over 3 plus 1.0122 is going to be equal to what? When is cos equal to 1? Zero. 0 and 2 pi. Now, I need to look at both of these because when I subtract 1.0122 from 0, I'm going to have a negative. And the negative number is then going to put x below 0. So it's not going to be included. So the 0 is actually not going to be looked at here. We're just going to be using the 2 pi to find when this maximum first occurs. So I'm going to solve the equation x over 3 plus 1.0122 equals 2 pi. So I'm going to do 2 pi, subtract 1.0122, multiply it by 3, and I get that x is equal to 15.81 hours. It does want that in decimal places to two decimal places, which we've done here. But I'm just going to imagine, because sometimes questions like to do this, they might say, give it in hours and minutes. This may seem pretty obvious to some of you, but for some of you, you might not spot this. How would I convert this from hours to hours and minutes? Not divide by 16. I'm going to times this extra bit by 60. So if I wanted to put it in minutes, I would do the 0.81 times 60, which is 49 minutes to the nearest minute. So it's actually 15 hours and 49 minutes. They haven't asked for that in the question. I know they haven't asked for that. I'm just showing you this because sometimes they do ask you that in the question. So I'm just going to put brackets around that because they haven't asked, but we might want to do that in the future. Then the next part of the question just says, calculate the times during the first 24 hours when the temperature is predicted by this model to be exactly 1,097 degrees centigrade. So this was part B of the question. Part C of the question, we want the temperature to be 1097. So all I'm going to do is solve this equation and this bit here. So I have 1097, I've replaced T with 1097, with 1,100 plus root 89 cos of x over 3 plus 1.0122. And they want the solutions to be in the range in the first 24 hours. OK, so that is going to be my range of values that I've got there. So I'm going to go about solving the equation, and then I'll think about changing the range in just a second. So I'm going to do 1,097, subtract 1,100, which is minus 3. And I'm going to divide by root 89 to get cos of x plus 3 plus 1.0122, like this. So I'm going to change the range. The range at the moment is between 0 and 24. Well, I'm going to first of all divide by 3. So I get x over 3. Divide this by 3, and I get 8. And then I'm going to add 1.0122. I'm running out of space. So I'm going to do 8 plus 1 point. What am I doing a calculator for? 9.0122. So this is the range that I'll be using for this question to solve the equation. All I'll do next is I'm going to do the inverse cos of that. So I'm going to do x over 3 plus 1.0122 is the inverse cos of minus 3 over root 89. Make sure you're in radians mode. And so I get uh, 1.89 is one of my solutions. How do I find the other solution for cos? I'm going to do 2 pi, take away that. I perhaps should have done a couple more decimal points on that, so I'm going to just quickly do a couple more. I should do 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1.8944, 1
and the other one is going to be 4.3888 to four decimal places. So they're both inside the range, so I'm pretty happy with those, but I'm also going to need to do what to them both? I'm going to plus 2 pi to them to find the other solution. So if I add 2 pi to the bottom one, just because it's on my calculator already, we get 10.6719, blah, blah, blah. But is that one going to be used? No. no, it's outside this range here, so I'm not even going to use this one. So let's go back to the other one that I had, which was 1.8944. I'm going to add 2 pi to that and I get 8.1776. Is that one inside the range? Yes. yes. So this are, these are the solutions to this equation. So I'm going to take each one of those answers, and I'm going to subtract 1.0122, and then multiply by 3 to get rid of the divide by 3. So that will tell me, if I do that to all of these, 1.8944 minus 1.0122 times it by 3. I've got 2.65 to two decimal places. I've also got, from the next one, which is my 4.388 minus 1.0122 times it by 3. I've got 10.13. And then I've got 8.1776 minus 1.0122 times it by 3. And I've got 21.50. And these are all in hours to two decimal places. Sam, were those the answers that you got? OK, good. I was just checking to see if. Yeah. These are the first 24 hours. These are the first. These are. So they're within the first 24 hours. And if I did it with this one here, it would have been outside the first 24 hours that we had. OK. I'm going to just check what the mark scheme says to see that we got these right. So we got 15.81 hours. I think that's what we got before. Yeah, 15.81 hours. And then the times are 2.65, 21.1, sorry, 10.13, and 21.50 hours that we have there for those times as well. So there's nothing like majorly different about these questions, apart from the fact that you need to pull out some of the information in the question. So in this case, they said that the temperature was 1,097. Now, we could ask a different kind of question. We could say to ourselves, for how long is the the kiln hotter than 1,097 in the first 24 hours. So you might need to look at these times here and think to yourself, when is it going to be hotter than 1,097? You could try and reason why, or you could probably just substitute in some values and think either when x is equal to 0, is it going to be hotter than 1,097? Yeah, it would actually be when this is 0, we'd have the cos of this thing. Well, you could just substitute in. I guess we should probably sub it in. If we did uh, 1,100 plus root 89 times the cos of uh, 1.0122, yeah, you do get that it's hotter than 1,097 before this time. So after 2.65 and between 2.65 and 10.13, it is going to be colder than 1,097. Then it's going to be hotter than 1,097 in between these, and then colder than 1,097 afterwards. And you can check that by either substituting in values, or you can have a look at the graph. So we're going to have a look at the graph, and then you're going to have a go at doing the next question, which is about the tides that we've got. So I'm just going to really quickly show what this looks like on Desmos. And so. The graph is the temperature equals 1,100 plus square root of 89 cos of x over 3 plus 1.0122. Yeah? And I'll change the axes so that the y-axis is going all the way up to 1,150. 
and I'm going to do the x-axis for the first 72 hours. Looks like this. So it doesn't look like the temperature of it's varying that much. I might actually change the y-axis so it's actually just going from 1,100. So here's the temperature of the, of the thingamajig, of the kiln. You can see how it's going up and down and up and down like this. The question was asking us when is the temperature equal to 1,097? And those are the values that we've got, 2.64, 10.13, and 21.496. If it ever asked, when is the temperature, I think I said hotter than 1,097, it would be that amount of time plus the difference between those amounts of time plus the difference between those amounts of time, all of that kind of stuff. So that's really what's going on inside the kiln. The temperature is getting cooler, hotter, cooler, hotter, like that. So I am going to ask for you to have a go at the next question that I've got in the booklet. And this one is about the, the tides that you have at sea. So in this one, this is actually how tides work. You know when you go to the beach and sometimes the water is really high up and sometimes the water is really, really far away? That's because of the tides as the waters change. And so this is going to be uh, modeling the height of the seawater that we have. And it follows a pretty similar pattern to what we've got here as the previous question. So you may want to refer back to that previous question. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the mark scheme up so that if you are looking back at this, you can have a look at parts A, B, C, and D. Part E, you may need to draw a graph for because it's not an official question. I made it up. So that's in case you're looking back at it so you can see these ones that you've got here. OK, I'm going to lead you to have a go at this question. We've got 20 minutes. I think we can get this done during the lesson. If you want, you can do it on the boards or you can do it in the, the paper. I don't mind, whatever you prefer.